We have to ask ourselves why this Atlanta shooting and this massive spike in anti-Asian hate crimes is happening. Because there are a lot of simplistic explanations flying around. A lot of people are blaming Donald Trump and his rhetoric surrounding COVID-19. Some people are pointing out that the alleged shooter is one in a long list of young white male shooters. And it's like, sure, that's all real, and I'm sure we'll learn a lot more about the racist and sexist motives of this one individual, but we need to go a level deeper. Anti-Asian hate crimes have been happening in this country since before Donald Trump was born. So what is it about this particular moment that is so many people turning on Asians? Ratcliffe called China, quote, the greatest threat to America today and the greatest threat to democracy and freedom worldwide since World War II. Communist China is already within our borders. If we don't set the rules, we in fact are going to find ourselves with China setting the rules. China is a pariah state. China is conducting biological experiments on its soldiers to enhance their capabilities. There, there is, uh, we should give no quarter, Neil, to China. There, there should be no, nothing spared. We're not going to let you destroy this country or our way of life. We've worked too hard and we fought too long to lose it to a Wuhan. That's what I said, a Wuhan virus. Yeah, I, I think that might have something to do with it. Take a look at this graph. Unfavorable views of China are at a historic high. In fact, it's not even close. So this begs the question, what explains this massive spike in anti-China sentiment? Why the sudden spike in 2018? To put it simply, the United States is starting to realize that it's not going to be the world's undisputed superpower forever. And a shift in the world order is coming way sooner than they expected. China's economy is on track to overtake the US economy by 2028. Chinese companies now lead the world in many fields, and Chinese technology is matching, if not surpassing, US technology. This stands in stark contrast to where China was just 15 or 20 years ago, when a lot of Americans saw China as just a sweatshop, a docile and submissive country that dutifully made little toys and trinkets for American kids. American policymakers and companies thought China would be the world sweatshop forever, but they were wrong. And now China's rise is threatening the formerly unchallenged dominance of US corporations. Okay, but what does this have to do with racist violence against Asians? Well, anytime the US ruling class is threatened, its typical response is to resort to or threaten violence. That's why Pentagon officials in both the Trump and Biden administrations say with the utmost clarity that the US is preparing for a massive confrontation with China. A huge percentage of US military forces are now pointing to or encircling China. And every good war starts with good, racist war propaganda. All of those stories about China stealing trade secrets and hacking your toaster, it's all part of that war propaganda. It's aimed at convincing you that China is an existential threat to you and your family. It's designed to dehumanize Chinese people, to portray them as obedient robots and fundamentally different and lesser than, which makes it much easier to justify going to war against them. <laughs> and this propaganda is clearly working. Just think back to that graph I showed you. These anti-Asian hate crimes are also proof that the propaganda is working. People are convinced that China is taking down the country and they're attacking anyone who looks Chinese, even if they're Korean, Thai, or some other nationality. So you can't just go to war. You have to have a long buildup of propaganda to psychologically prepare the population. You can't be honest and say, hey, we just need a few trillion dollars and we need you to go kill innocent people and die so we can preserve the unrivaled position of Wall Street bankers. No, you have to create some lie that you're doing it to protect the American people or protect human rights. And you have to utterly dehumanize the enemy you intend to attack. This is how the drive to war always starts. You probably remember how the US went into an anti-Muslim frenzy after 9-11 and innocent Muslims, but also people who were mistaken for being Muslim, like Sikhs, were attacked, harassed, and spit on. This is what anti-Japanese propaganda looked like in World War II. And of course, Japanese Americans, many of whom had lived their whole lives in the United States, were forced into camps and falsely incarcerated during this time. 
that racism at home is a necessary component to waging war abroad, which proves that imperialism is really the ultimate anti-Asian hate crime. It was US imperialism that killed over a million Filipinos in 1898 when the country's population was just over 6 million. It was the United States that was the only country in history to deploy nuclear weapons against a human target. It was US imperialism that killed 20% of the entire Korean population during the Korean War, which can only really be understood as a genocide. A US general admitted that after nine months of bombing, American bombers ran out of targets, so they just started shooting anything that moved. It's the US that's responsible for murdering three million Vietnamese and deploying chemical weapons, which leave Vietnamese children with birth defects to this day. And it's not just the past. There are hundreds of US military bases scattered throughout the Asia Pacific. A lot of these bases also house nuclear weapons. US soldiers on these bases have repeatedly raped and murdered local women. So it's pretty unsurprising to see this total disregard for women's lives reflected in this alleged shooter. These repeated acts of violence have given rise to a vibrant anti-US base movement across Asia. This is what all these politicians are leaving out of their solidarity statements, probably because they support these occupation policies. So while I'm glad that people are talking about racism against Asian people, let's define it properly. Yes, there are microaggressions like when someone asks you, no, where are you really from? Then there are these disgusting slurs and overt attacks, but that's all part of one larger macroaggression against the peoples of Asia. All that being said, I just want to end on this. This is not an Asian issue. Sure, Asians should speak on this, but so should everyone. You don't have to wait on your Asian friends to give you the approval to speak out against war or racism. Not to mention, you also have an interest in stopping those trying to trick us into thinking that China's our enemy. As if it's China that's preventing the government from raising the minimum wage or passing universal health care. In fact, it's actually the same people telling us that China is evil that are the ones lobbying to cut funding for housing and health care and education, which is exactly why they want to blame the country's miseries on China. So the next time you hear the media say that China's the problem, ask yourself which class of people benefits from that narrative and what kind of violence it could produce next. <laughs>